Hello everyone, uh, we're extremely excited to have you all here. Uh, we're just going to wait for one or two minutes to let people enter. Uh, while we do that, we request you all to tell us where you're from and what are you currently doing in the chat section. We'll wait for one or two minutes for people to come in. Hi, Aisha. Aisha from Bangalore. We'd love to hear from you where you come from. What do you do? Hi, Simran from Bombay. Uh, before we begin, I will just quickly tell you the rules or the way to go ahead in this conversation. Hi, Abraham from Bangalore. Hi, Kavya from Hyderabad. Uh, we have a we have a section called questions. So during the course of this webinar, if you have any questions, please put them in the question box and not in the Q&R in the chat section. So we don't miss them out. All right. All right. Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome uh, to this webinar. Uh, I'll quickly introduce you to our esteemed panelists. And hi, Pragati from Orissa. OK. So. Um, Welcome to the Prana Interactive. Prana Interactive uh, comes from our wellness program, Prana. And Prana, the word means life force. It's a Sanskrit word. And our wellness program is essentially something that is you at the center and helps you discover the interactions of the inside world and your outside world. We do so with the pranic rhythm, which is the pranic rhythm is you, your body, your family, your communities, and earth. So the pranic rhythm helps individuals and organizations understand their interrelation of their own prana on their immediate environments, communities, and planet at large. So this interactive brings together explorers, global thought leaders, researchers, and change makers to trigger critical dialogues about universal wellness and increase awareness to help individuals and families discover their own well-being. Welcome to Asan, which means easy. It is awareness and sensitization for all inclusive action. Uh, I'd like to welcome our esteemed panelists, uh, Dr. Shekhar Saxena and Ms. Neha Kirpal. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Dr. Shekhar Saxena is the former director of mental health at the World Health Organization and is currently a professor in the practice of mental health at Harvard T. H. Chan School of Public Health. He's also the co-founder of his consulting venture, Libram, uh, who also sees Ms. Neha Kirpal as the co-founder. Um, Libram is the world's first strategic think tank that works in scaling up mental health solutions. Uh, welcome, Dr. Shekhar. I'd like to also welcome Ms. Neha Kirpal. Um, she's actually very interesting because her work lies at the intersection of the creative and the social sector. Um, she's the founder of India's first international art fair and is currently a part of the World Economic Forum young global leaders community. As I mentioned, she's also the co-founder of Librum and has her own venture called Inner R, a digital platform offering extensive mental health solutions. Thank you, Dr. Saxena and Ms. Kirpal for joining us. We're extremely excited to have you here. Uh, I'd like to open the floor to Dr. Saxena. Thank you very much, uh, Vaishali. And uh, it's such a pleasure to join. Uh, it is very important that we pay attention to our mental health and I appreciate your effort in uh, starting a dialogue on that so that people can know what mental health is, why it is so important, why it is so important during these times and uh, more importantly, what can they do about it uh, as they change uh, the way they are working, the change, change the way they are spending time at home uh under tremendous stress many times and so on so i look forward to this one hour of uh, interactive discussion i would like to begin with uh, a few points uh, just explaining what mental health is and why it is so very important during these times uh, we and many other professionals think that uh, mental health is an spectrum that means uh, we all are at at somewhere during uh, on on this spectrum some of us have a very good mental health some of us have not such a good mental health but we can all do something about it and uh, as as your introduction said 
if we know what to do, it is very asan. If we don't, then we'll end up with a lot of difficulty. So it's, it's very important to understand and to do something about it. I like to present two slides. So I'll request you to, uh, to put on the first graphic and I'll just explain what it means. Essentially, it's the, it's the spectrum of mental health. Just like our physical health, we are at some point of time on our mental health and it varies over time. Some of us have a good mental health, which is represented here on this graphic as positive mental health. We are good. We are doing well. Uh, in some cases, we have a mental distress at some point of time. And during current times, a lot of us have mental distress, which is troubling us in some way, which is impairing our abilities in some way, but we still can cope with that. Uh, some of us develop what is called a mental disorder, which is clearly uh, a, a condition that has uh, gone up in such a way that it interferes with our work, it causes distress, and it causes some impairment in our functioning, which is lasting at least two weeks or more. And lastly, some of us might have a disability because social and mental health reason but it is wherever we are on this spectrum something can be done about that if we have good mental health we can still make it better we can promote our mental health if we have a mental distress we can prevent it from becoming a mental disorder if you already have a mental disorder then we can do something about to achieve a remission and prevention of a relapse because mental illness is usually a recurring problems which come and go and if we have a stable psychosocial disability, then we can strive towards a recovery so that in spite of disorder capacity. And this function, remind, uh, I would like to remind you, is for self, but also for our family, our work, and our community. So mental health is, is very directly related to our own level of comfort, but also our functioning in the environment where we live. If I can have the next slide, please. I'd just like to say that during current times where the whole world is struggling with the pandemic, our whole lifestyle has changed. We are having a lot of impact on our mind. This is uh, partly because of direct which is uh, affecting some of us. We are getting infected. Some of us are having severe illness getting admission in the hospital and unfortunately some of uh, the people affected by covid are, are dying because of the disease which is uh, an extremely serious situation but almost all of us are affected in an indirect way for example we have fear and concern about the disease in the community perhaps how it will affect our family colleagues and friends and this is the major reason for our distress in fact, as professionals, we define anxiety disorder as fear of unknown. And there are too many things which are unknown right now. What will tomorrow bring? Will it come to our community? Will it come to our, our family? Will I get affected? These are all unknowns and they create a lot of anxiety. But going ahead, it is also causing restriction of our movements because of lockdowns, because of uh, travel restrictions and all of that. Many of us have either a loss or uncertainty about our jobs. We can't go to our work getting fired. We have certainty whether the job is one month of also loss or reduction in income. Many of us are directly dependent on working. We don't go to work. We don't get paid. And that is affecting us directly, our mental health. Change in the day routine and schedule. Many of us are working from home, working odd hours, and so on, being away from home and family. Some of us are stranded in a different city, cannot move, be away from family, or lockdown with the larger family, which can also be stressful. We have responsibility for child care, responsibility for and also last year, for other ailments, many of us have a problem of diabetes or hypertension or other ailments and the providers are not ready to receive us. We cannot go and visit them. And sometimes the medicine supply is also interrupted. So this is just a short list of reasons 
why our mental health could be impacted. The list is actually much longer. And, and individually, we are affected by all of these things. We can remove the slide now, but I just want to say that uh, COVID is affecting all of us in, in, in a different ways, but in some way or the other is affecting our mental health. And we are all under either distress, more distress or even a disorder. And we need to recognize that so that we can do something about it. And we will quickly during this discussion come to how to recognize the stress, how to recognize our anxieties, depression, and, and quite importantly, what to do about them. I worked in the area of mental health for about 40 years now. I have worked in AIMS in Delhi, have also worked in WHO. Now I am working for a US university, but also help trying to help people in India to cope up with this as a part of the Libram, which is our consultancy company. But really more people know about what can they be affected by and how they can help themselves, the better it is for your mental health and the community's mental health. Back to you, Vaishali. Thank you, Dr. Shekhar. That was very insightful. Um, actually, I feel like at this point, it will be very interesting to know from the audience, you know, what do, what is their take on understanding how many people are actually affected with mental health? Um, if we can have the poll section. So there's going to be a link on your chat that has the link to the poll and the code that you can type in to type in your answers. So the question is, what is the percentage of people who experience mental illness during some mental illness sometime during their lifetime. Uh, we'll have the code and the link on the chat. If you could all start answering, we know what the audience is thinking at this point. One second, if you guys don't have access, I'll... Okay. Uh, due to some technical challenge, we're going to come back to this question again. Uh, for now, I'll pass the I'll pass the mic to Miss Neha Kirpal, who has very interesting insights too, and then we'll come back to this poll. Over to you, Miss Kirpal. Thank you. Thank you, Vishali. Am I audible? Yes. Great. Um, thank you, Shekhar, for, um, for, for setting uh, the tone for today's talk and, uh, and obviously uh, the very important issue of mental health, I think, at a time like this today, we are all in some way or the other uh, dealing with not just the pandemic, but the silent pandemic uh, of uh, mental health to mental illness. And I think we find ourselves on different days at different points in that spectrum. So what I'd just like to begin by sort of saying is that it's very important. Uh, a level of self-awareness is very important because uh, you can't really know what the problem is or seek any help or solution if you're not really aware of where you are at uh, in your own um, uh, sort of state of mind and, and emotional well-being. Um, so I would really uh, look at sort of a sense of awareness to be the first step. Uh, the second being, you know, in times like these when there's uncertainty and there are a lot of challenges in the environment, uh, to look at um, an acceptance of that. And, and for some people, that comes in a, uh, it's very difficult because, you know, suddenly as as leaders uh, uh, in organizations, as people working in different roles, as students transitioning um, and, and young employees who are in between jobs or, or working from home, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty and ambiguity. Um, we've seen uh, in the course of the work that we do both at Librem and, and in RR, we've seen the extreme uh, turbulence that people are facing. And the challenge is acceptance of that comes uh, with a great deal of difficulty because we are trying to replicate what we had. We are trying to go. We are trying to still hold on to what we had—a certain way of being, a certain way of interacting, a certain relationship with the world. And in a way, what's important to recognize is that that has changed, and it's changed for a for a lasting period of time. Uh, and and some part of that change would be permanent. Now, change isn't always negative. It is sometimes it can propel us to doing something positive and and making changes in our life. Uh, maybe maybe making time for mental health in a way that we never have maybe making time for nurturing relationships or, or difficult traumatic episodes that we may never have really uh, cared much about. Uh, but there is also a period of grief. And so I think it's very important for us to recognize that and, and maybe deal with it in whatever way uh, is appropriate uh, to really be able to accept. 
the third dimension is really to be able to uh, seek help for yourself and also for those around um and you know i've i've had a um, a long history with mental health i've seen a lot of mental health conditions in my own family and i know that you know i shaker um, um has always said that the earlier you you create a I think uh, we lost Miss Kripal on some technical error. We'll just have her back. Um, by the time she joins in, we've sent you the code, uh, so you all can start filling in your questions. We'll just have Miss Kripal join us back. As we do that, you all have the link to the to the code and the chat of the question that we'd asked you before. Uh, so feel free to start logging in your answers till we have Miss Kripal join us back in the session. um we'll just share your answers on the screen that's very interesting nobody uh, nobody's mentioned 1 in 50 or 1 in 100 or oh, we have a 1 in 100 Yes. There are some very interesting insights. Please uh, write your answers on the code which is given in the website link. What do you think of these polls, Doctor Saxena? There are some very interesting answers coming in. Oh, and we have Miss Kirpal back with us. Yes, can you hear the, uh, the poll answers uh, are uh, Sorry Dr Sapsana please continue Yes uh, so the uh, in this case uh, the majority wins because i can see that the the largest number of people are answering one in four which is actually the correct answer and if you read the question carefully it's sometime during the lifetime and the lifetime prevalence of mental disorders is actually one in four which is much higher than most people believe and uh, this is much much more than the lifetime prevalence of many of the other common uh, men, uh, common physical disorders like diabetes or cancer or other illnesses so this is something that uh, uh, that is very remarkable and i'll just mention a few mental disorders which are common anxiety disorder is common depression is common and substance use like alcohol use disorder so drug use disorder is common stress related conditions are common and some of the less common diseases are psychosis like schizophrenia or bipolar illness and uh, in the elderly group dementia so these are illnesses that are common and overall one in four is expected to have it sometime during the lifetime back to you vishali right uh that's actually very interesting because a lot of people are not aware of these uh, figures uh to till the time we have miss kirpal join us i think there's been some technical error uh which we will fix as we go along um dr saxena uh, it's very interesting how you said you know the like you had a presentation that spoke about how things are changing there's so much uncertainty uh work from home has become a different like you know how initially the voices that we used to hear around us used to be like of cars or you know used to be around buildings and chitter chatter but now it's more like you know you wake up to birds singing around you when you wake up for a work from home so um could you share some light on you know how like there is some change i mean of course there's all kinds of uh, the repercussions are seen in all kinds of positives or negatives but you know when you're working from home what are the kind of challenges that bring about on your mental health that people are sort of not um so aware of as to why you know they're having some symptoms like irritability or it could be in any form well uh, vaishali this is a very interesting question and and perhaps uh, we can generalize to some extent but a lot of people will have their own personal level of stress dis- distress or even positive things so let me uh, say some things that are common 
and are affecting uh, the uh, largest number of people especially the the young adults who are in in their early career they are working they work for 5 years maybe 10 years this is as neha was saying earlier this is a period of massive change suddenly the world has got upside down you got up in the morning you did a few things and you went to work right. you worked the whole day came back did some other things did some social things you you had some entertainment and you slept and suddenly the boundaries the schedule is completely changed you get up in the morning and you think about work you start work early you continue work but it's it's interspersed with some other family obligations you have child care you have elder care you have shopping to do which is very different now and you have socialization to do which is extremely different so uh, in a way every change can be stressful but sometime it can lead to very many positive things let me uh, say a few things about how people can take change in their stride and actually make the best out of that which many people are doing the first tip is that you should embrace the change and not protest against it there are things that you can control and there are other things which you cannot control focus on things that you can control and don't worry too much about things that you cannot control if the government has decided on a lockdown there's nothing much you can do about it so don't fret about it don't protest take it in your stride and adapt your own life to that change environment rather than to continue to to kind of fight it that's the first step the second tip which is very important is that the whole world is talking about social distancing don't take it literally do physical distancing which is very important because it prevents you to get infected but be socially connected so actually i have said it many times the the phrase social distancing is a misnomer it should be physical distancing and social connectedness so be connected with the people that are nearby your own family your own colleagues your workmates uh, friends make a phone call join them on website do you social media not for the wrong things but for the right things to connect with people and that is your biggest insurance against feeling lonely being isolated and being very stressful the third tip i would like to give is maintain a schedule maybe a change schedule but maintain it well so that you have fixed time for different things and you you can predict and plan your day don't be completely flexible and and maintain some kind of schedule and make some boundaries about when you are working and when you are not working is very easy to spend all your time working or all on all your time on family engagements and ignore the other one so you have a balanced approach and do that and vishali if you put up with me my last tip is do take time and do self care it is extremely important that you look after yourself mentally and uh, and, and not ignore that because as they say in many cases uh, as they say when you travel by air put on your own oxygen mask before you put for others because if you are yourself not conscious you will not be able to help others it's the same for mental health look after yourself do self care and of course help others also what does self care mean essentially maintaining a good schedule having enough sleep having enough nutrition having enough exercise even if the avenues for exercise are rather limited nowadays you may not be able to go out but do what you can within the confines of your home or whatever you can access and also keep a tab on your stress level don't allow it to work go too high and if it does go high do things that can reduce your stress so that you look after your own mental health and well being and that is going to be the more sustainable uh, way of living life rather than to be too stressed because this is not going to be over very soon as neha said we need to adapt to this functioning back to vishali and i can later on talk about specifically about the work life how you can ad- adapt yourself for that thank you uh, for these interesting insights dr shekhar i love the part where you went like you know it's most important is self care and you know i immediately was thinking you know having a schedule is important but 
a lot of times you know we uh, undervalue the essence of exercising and eating the right kind of food uh, which overall impacts our mental health as well and uh, not to forget how dr shekhar had mentioned that you know we all must maintain uh, physical distancing but continue to be social so please continue your zoom calls and start meeting your friends online if not <laughs> anything else uh, so ms kirpal is having some technical issues but we will carry on um dr shekhar i have a question for you you know we were having this conversation and initially uh, now it's become like okay now lockdowns have happened and there is a lot of covid conversation um but even before there would be like you know at work you would often see a lot of anxieties and a lot of stress coming up and people have those symptoms without realizing that you know where it's coming from a and b not having um and being understood by your fellow colleagues in that situation and now that you are not physically present you mentioned something very beautiful the last time we were having a conversation saying you know you can't read someone's body language anymore so how do you communicate how do you how do you build break those barriers across if you could uh, share some light on you know how as colleagues you can come in in the space of mental health and how that the aspect of socially not really distancing can play here sure uh, in fact uh, in our work we are always dependent on several things one of the most important things is to communicate to get a feedback about how you're doing to provide a feedback to your colleagues and your uh, subordinates but also get a feedback from your seniors from your colleagues and and that really keeps you uh, productive efficient and meaningful and all of these things depend on communication the communication of course can be verbal Uh, talking to each other could be written you write an email or you write a memo you read things but a large part of that communication is actually non verbal you you read other people's body language you read other people's facial expressions and you get a sense as to where you're going whether you've done well you've not done well you could do it another way and so on now the way work is happening nowadays it has changed a lot because often you are communicating by emails you are communicating by audio phone and you're not seeing the person who is communicating with you you can of course have a zoom call but even there just like what you are having now you miss out on a lot for example uh, vaishali i can see you but i cannot see the 40 odd people who are at the end and i don't know what you are feeling maybe all of this what we are saying is totally irrelevant and i need to get that feedback and a good way to do that of course is also by a question answer that you already put in and that is very very important so in work we need to adjust to these different ways of communication and all of us should try to provide the kind of communication and feedback that will make the other person feel more comfortable get a sense of where we want them to go how we are doing ourselves and and make it as good as possible so that is very important one special aspect of that is from senior managers who have a large team to manage they uh, often had earlier meetings in a room where they could see everybody and and communicate uh, also not ignoring people who are generally not very verbal so they might be the silent people in this work atmosphere it's very important to keep everybody in the group in mind and not ignore people who may be not so verbal who may not be so interactive just keep a count of everybody in your group and communicate with each one of them as a part of the group but sometimes very essential to go back to one to one and say we haven't heard from you in the last week tell me how you're doing would you like me to do something more and all of that is extremely important for a good work atmosphere and also for our own mental health so these are some of the things that we can do one last tip feel uh, feel uh, feel guilty about taking time out and feel pride in contributing with what you have been able to do because these are all difficult times for us and these are not normal times so we should also uh, appreciate small things that we have been able to achieve but also small things that other people have been able to achieve so that a positive feedback to say you have done well and also having pride in yourself having done well that we need to pass to everybody because otherwise there is already too many negative things happening in life and if we continue with the negative things at work 
we will be feeling extremely depressed by the end of the day take care be positive and give this positive feeling to others thank you so much dr shekhar uh i think ms kirpal has joined us back hello ms kirpal can you hear me ms kirpal if you can hear is a section where uh one second ms kirpal if you can hear me you can uh, just go to the video option down below Oh, we've lost connection with her again. Vaishali, this is a it's a good or a bad example of how communication sometimes doesn't work. <laughs> so we need to be prepared for that. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, move on to another interesting question for you, Doctor Shekhar. I'm, uh, I'm I'm I have a bunch of them uh, till Miss Kirpal joins us back. Um, Doctor Shekhar, there's um, a lot of stigma around mental health which we've sort of noticed uh and now that we have families also join us here you know there's a lot of uh, i wouldn't say just negatively where they're saying okay but a, a lack of understanding when somebody says uh you know this is happening xyz things are happening and especially at work it's sometimes intermixed with at work for incompetence or sometimes at um, home or just you know being a difficult child so is it something that we can you know speak to parents or how is it that we can address those stigmas that you know exist and you know hamper our daily lives i think you're raising a very important point mental illnesses have been associated with stigma for a very long time and all through the world stigma is not exclusive to india it's there everywhere and we need to really do something to decrease that to remove that because as i was explaining earlier mental continuum we are all at some point on that continuum the world cannot be divided into two groups of people one who have a mental illness and others who don't in fact the current environment is actually uh, very helpful for removing a stigma because we are all feeling some distress mentally and it's not that either we are healthy or we have an illness so this really is very very helpful because all of us have some distress some problems we are struggling we are finding it difficult to cope with and that is actually a good sign because then we pay start paying attention to our own mental health but still stigma might appear and we need to remove that uh, there are many ways to remove stigma we need to focus on the person rather than on the person's illness just like a person with cancer is also a person similarly a person with anxiety is a person first an anxiety second and that we need to remember there are people who are struggling we might be struggling tomorrow so we need to really need to be very open ended inclusive about trying to help others and trying to help ourselves as i was saying earlier let me give you some examples uh, children uh, learn they go to school they perform and some children maybe about 3 to 5% of all children have something called learning disability they cannot learn as quickly and as efficiently as some other children and they need some special help in fact there is a phrase there to say children with special needs now that those are still normal children with some delays in 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 learning and then they just need something more and we need to be very very concerned about the fact that we don't discriminate against them and we regard themselves as well as their parents as equal part of the community with some additional needs and we need to fulfill these needs similarly take the example of workplace you have a team of 10 people on an average in a couple of years one of them will have either anxiety or depression and it's just like they suffering from a period where they need something special and we need to be very mindful that we don't discriminate against them mental disorders appear they can also be cured and the person can go back to normal work and we need to provide the kind of help that they need so that we don't exclude them we don't punish them and we actually provide the kind of support that they need so i'm talking about stigma as a phenomenon but also what can we do about it and you know welcome them with open arms support them for the time that they need support and then they will be again as much productive 
as they have been earlier. So these are important things that we can do. I can see that Neha is back, and I appreciate Neha's uh, Neha's very much valuable comments on how to recognize anxiety and depression and what to do about that. Thank you, uh, Shekhar, and my apologies. Um, I um, I made several attempts to log back in, but uh, it took me ten minutes. Um, I think it's very important to recognize um, when it is that we might feel like we're just going through a period of sadness. uh and when it is that it might actually be something that is uh, leading on to depression or, or clinical anxiety uh such that we need therapy or we need uh some level of medication or support and the first thing really is uh moving away from the self stigma and denial as as i think shekhar touched upon uh and really building uh, the conversation and normalizing that conversation in your environment so whether it's in your community workplaces um uh, at home or uh in your own uh, you know with your own private life Uh, to really normalize that what we've seen um, in the context of nrr i mean i joined nrr last year uh, it was started by dr amit malik and over um, you know the the history of uh, sort of self assessments and reflections that people have been through we've actually had about 7 lakh people take the take the test about am i am i sad or am i depressed and uh, it's amazing that most people have such a simple query that it's difficult to put their finger on what it is that their current state is and therefore are they sort of in a way eligible would we give ourselves permission to seek help or not what we find across the use of our platform and we have people coming from over 100 cities now uh, today and largely young people uh, like like most of the audience here is that a lot of people have anxiety and uh, need to work on themselves but don't want to necessarily go and engage with therapy or get medication or get any professional support and so there are lots of programs and self help opportunities available where you can work on yourself uh, there was some context setting around prana and the need to really align your internal and external environment and i think now more than ever we all need to do that because the times that we're in none of us have faced and what it takes to deal with uncertainty can it self produce anxiety so you may have been perfectly fine and normal and coping well and suddenly you find that there are there are things that are taking over and not able to cope as well uh, there might also be in some cases certain uh, deep rooted worries or existential worries that are there or that were buried that today come to the fore so it's very important to be kind to ourselves it's very important to recognize that you know nobody really has the right answers everybody goes through these issues we've all been there uh, you know there is no discrimination when it comes to mental health and mental illness uh, it it applies equally to people of any race any color any socio economic ladder um, no matter where you are in the world uh, and the solutions are also very similar and a lot of it starts with an an admission to yourself uh, building some awareness about what it might be talking about it with your family and community and then seeking help whether it is online through digital tools like nrr and several others uh, or uh, going in for therapy it could be on the phone it could be on video counseling and and face to face or even in some cases for certain periods taking medication the important thing is to get help get it as soon as possible and then move on from there and and you know just the message that um a lot of these conditions are actually 100% treatable and definitely curable i mean in my own case we've experienced that with extreme uh, mental health illnesses in the family and we've seen a great degree of recovery and rehabilitation uh, so it should give a lot of confidence that the hardest part of the journey is actually the start start line after that it actually gets easier and there's actually a, a formula and a way forward uh, that can give a great degree of normalcy and productivity back to us if we were to invest in that first step thank you ms kripa those are some very interesting insights uh, you know while you were talking uh, you spoke of so many things you know that people the first step is to you know you have to take that first step towards finding that solution it doesn't have to be whatever it is it could be just going and speaking to a friend and you know just have taking that first step so it will be very interesting you know if our audience right now can take the poll and tell us you know what is it that they do for their mental health So I'm gonna post on chat uh, a link to the Mentimeter again uh, and the code, and we'd love to hear from you and tell us. Like I've mentioned the code, right? And this is the link. We would love to hear what is it that you do for your own mental health. Please 
please follow the link which is mentioned below and type the code and you will be able to put in your answers which we can see on the screen right now it's the same code so if you start logging in your answers you can just click on the same link yeah okay lovely we have some answers so exercising trying and stay positive movies hikes what is it that you do for your mental health we'd love to know music meditate i'll keep it open for Five more seconds. Please answer on the chat. Music. I watch my Bharat. Talk to my mom. Okay. Lovely. Um, what do you think, uh, Dr. Shekhar and Ms. Kripal, of these answers that are coming through right now? You know, a lot of people are like, there's a mix between music, movies, meditation, so some sort of recreational activity. Uh, Dr. Shekhar, you're muted. If, uh, you have to unmute yourself. Very interesting again, uh, because uh, it does combine things that you do yourself, but also things that you do with others. Like, you know, there is an answer talking to my mother, talking to other family members, watching things like movie, entertainment, also meditate, and, uh, and also other activities like going for a hike. These are all things that people can do one thing which has not come out which i would like to flag is uh, keep your news consumption under control for your own mental health because we know that uh, there is also besides the pandemic there's an epidemic which is uh, a, a pandemic of wrong information you know you you join a whatsapp chat you go to facebook you go to twitter and you see all of those things Half of them might be wrong and half of them could be too negative. There could be scary things. Now, my advice is keep your news consumption under control. Keep it, uh, keep it low. Of course, it's important to know about what's happening in the world, but it's not good to have, uh, you know, talking, uh, getting news every minute, every hour and, and also too many negative things. So keeping uh, news uh, limited, but also from credible sources so that you don't rely on any rumor which is going around mm -hmm. is quite important actually for your own mental health. Over to Neha. Thank you. I mean, it's great. These are a lot of these are around nurturing oneself, right? Uh, nurturing oneself, uh, uh, being in a wellness zone, being in a positive zone. Uh, and uh, as, as Shekhar has always said, uh, being social. Uh, right we have to have physical distance but we don't have to have social distance and we're we're social beings we we crave connection uh, a lot of we must recognize that we're missing a lot of things we're missing the visual cues we're missing uh, touching and meeting people as as uh, as our social interactions are, are limited uh, and so we have to recognize that and and uh, each of these uh, are maybe there are other ways of you know, connecting uh, online uh, with friends and things that that we can do i think fundamentally it boils down to me as some as a level of um, uh, uh, tuning in that one needs to have with oneself right uh, and, and that's really critical uh, the more harmony there is with the internal environment and trying to see how best to how best to nurture that because uh, sometimes it, there may not be any illness or any problem at all it just is about nurturing the the inner self and and you know making the most of of uh, your present environment um, it's also important to recognize that there may be people who are already struggling, maybe people in this group. I mean, as Shekhar mentioned, one in four. Um, and, and so we are all, you know, it, it, you know, we've all been through our own challenges. And so it's important to seek help. There are helplines available. Uh, there is a lot of organized support that is available today. Um, there are people who are doing counseling services in different local languages uh, to make it easier. Uh, and so it's very important to actually get help when you need it. Some of us may be in environments where it is difficult because there is there are abusive homes, there are homes that have uh, substance use and addiction issues, um, or they, they may have relationship conflicts. And it's very important to recognize that all of these take away from our mental health and to be able to give ourselves that level of nurturing and compassion to actually do something about it. 
sometimes interacting with people is the problem sometimes not interacting with people is the problem so uh, it's about recognizing what works for oneself and and then moving from there thank you ms kripal i have one uh, after hearing uh, everything you said something very interesting came up in my mind you said you know uh, to connect with yourself with yourself which is very important um i think i'm being echoed ms kripal yeah so to connect with yourself what is your take on dr shankar if you could also tell us with ms kripal uh spending time in nature like what is your thought like now we we can't necessarily go hiking but what is it that we can do around us can you go you know in our gardens or what is it that we can how nature can help us come closer to you know ourselves i think it's i'd love to begin by just saying that to me it's the difference between human being and human doing uh, a lot of us get our sense of self our identity our relationship with the world by doing certain things it may be by our careers it may be by our job maybe by our social status maybe by whatever it is and we realize that there is a leveling effect um and uh, uh, sort of a back to basics uh, effect that this uh, whole uh, pandemic has had where we are really left to what is core to us and nature is that right it is about it is about who we are it is about our fundamental sense of being and connecting with that is really what is uh, truly natural right. so it might be with your side it might be with um, the relationships around you and and really connecting with nature that gives you a, a sense of connection and bonding to the world outside um and and is very nurturing at many levels i mean shekhar can of course clinically uh, also validate that as well shekhar so uh, you know connecting with nature in whatever way it is possible within the limitations that have been imposed upon us is actually very very therapeutic uh, if you can go out for walks use the parks use the forest that may be nearby if you can't at least do what you can in your own garden maybe also uh, i must say that pets are very very mentally healthy if you have a pet spending time with the pet uh, maybe a dog will be extremely useful because that is also connecting in a way to yourself uh, besides the social connections that you might have uh, also just to say that it may be with nature or outside nature but having a hobby having having something to do which you may not be required to do which you might have liked to do for many years you never had the time is actually quite important during these times and we can people can pick up a hobby or a, or a, a kind of activity that gives them pleasure the the eventual objective is what gives you pleasure but also what gives you a sense of having achieved something which is actually quite important thank you dr shekhar that's very interesting how uh, mr pal also said you know connecting with yourself is very important you said you know like it's not doing the things and achieving the things like you, you don't have to achieve a certain task to become a better version of yourself you just have to work and reconnect so some very beautiful thoughts uh, before we open um, the last 15 minutes for questions i'd like to open one last poll for the audience uh we'd like to ask you all okay uh if you had the option which following work model would you prefer okay the links are going to come on your chat right now apologies for my technical apologies browser is not being one second we'll have the chat now oh perfect you have the chat in the link now Part, partly from office partly from home what are your thoughts uh, dr shekhar and ms kripal on these uh, answers answers okay so uh, i'm just going to check to be it is uh, as one would have expected uh, that for many people 
continue uh, to work from home actually is also very stressful on the other hand many people were spending a lot of time commuting you know an hour or more every every morning and every evening for them uh, working from home is actually better but i can see the majority of people are basically saying partly from office and partly from home which is actually a hybrid model which might suit many people very well it is important to be at the workplace and for many people it is an essential because they're working with their hands they're producing something people in the factory but for many people working remotely is quite a clear possibility and and they have enjoyed it and they would like to continue to some extent and many industries now are thinking of having this kind of hybrid model that not everybody needs to come to office every day they can come twice a week they can come for half a day and still work from home which provides them with the flexibility to manage their own time but i must say that uh, the employers and the management has to be smart enough to realize that with this flexibility there is a responsibility on them to be more flexible but also to be looking at those indicators which are truly reflective of the productivity and not just see the watch see the product see the see the uh, not only the production but also the mental health of the people and their well being so that a sustainable model can be achieved where the organization is benefiting but people are feeling comfortable and they're enjoying what they're doing so i am not surprised to see that the red line partly from home and partly from office is the the preferred option for many people obviously it will vary from management and also from people what they prefer if a person has a one room home where there are six people obviously that person will like to go to work at least for some time over Ms. Kirpal. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think it's, um, you know, as Shekhar said, we all want uh, a bit of everything and the best of everything. And um, there are times when that's possible and, and it's hard for us to, to recognize and accept uh, times when it's not, not so possible. Um, but for me, really, these choices are around where we are getting our needs met from. And so as human beings, we have a whole set of needs, right? We have physical and emotional needs. We have spiritual needs we have uh, social connection needs we have financial needs uh, and and the need for so, uh, social interaction and all of that so it's really important to recognize where are some of these needs getting met and in some places people's entire existence is around their workplace their whole family their friends their whole social life is around their workplace and they will have a very different answer from those whose needs are largely being met at home and work is only seen as something they have to do to maybe go and earn a living so it's very important to recognize the choices are because of certain needs and so we actually have the opportunity now to say to really look at it afresh and really look at saying what are our needs what are the different things in our life that are fulfilling those needs and the few things that are out of the window are things like work life balance at the moment or boundaries between personal life and work life or what a father's role is typically and a mother's role typically and all of that So it's a great opportunity to just recraft your life, your identity, and the way you interact with the world and with your work, where you really make choices and say, "What are my needs? What are the sources of those needs? Um, how does my work intersect with my need for everything else? Uh, and and what combination might work?" And throw in a bit of nature and a bit of social contact and a bit of self nurturing and care, and that's your whole package. And that's your whole package. In fact, I would just like to add that uh, COVID press the pause button on our computers, and maybe there is another button called reset, which we should press. We must go for the great reset right now. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to open the floor to questions, and I've gotten some very interesting questions coming in. Um, there's one question from Pranita Tripathi. She says. are there some tips to relax and focus which has become very important now that everything is online so are there some tips that you know we can quickly relax and bring our focus back on our work or to the things that we're doing i i can take that actually and i have worked on that quite a bit uh, what i call micro steps which are small things that you can do within a minute or maximum 5 minutes 
and feel uh, much refreshed so maybe when you're working maybe on a computer you can take time every hour to do something it can be just a short walk it could be a breathing exercise that you do for a minute just regulated breathing which is similar to what you were talking about prana and uh, maybe have a glass of water maybe uh, make a phone call to a family member maybe listen to a music maybe read one page of something that you like which is just away from the work so taking time away and enjoying that time is very very rejuvenating and one should really focus on those things even if they are for a very short time so that those are micro steps which i would suggest if you if you look up the websites of uh, inner hour and talk about some micro steps you will find a lot others than what i have just not talked about absolutely yeah. it's the, it's the little things that you can do um uh, and and each of it adds up uh, and so some of it might be uh, in the area of of wellness and self care uh, eating well sleeping well keeping a routine some level of social contact all of these are are in any case the must dos uh, but then also what might what might work for you in your individual case some people might want to journal some might want to watch something some might want to read some might walk in nature um pet therapy um you know have a hot a hot char uh, these are different things that work uh, for different people so uh, each to his own thank you but i thank must you. add that uh, one should avoid uh, consumption of uh, intoxicants a lot of people are finding too much stressed and they are uh, over indulging on either use of tobacco or alcohol and sometimes even drugs and those are things really which might give you temporary relief but are extremely harmful so one one has to be very careful about not increasing the consumption of some of these things yeah just to add to that you know there are some of these short term quick hacks or quick fixes that we've all uh, uh, been uh, sort of used to taking at some point or the other um and this is not this is not a sprint it's a marathon you know we are in this for the long haul and it's very important to recognize that the second thing i want to try and bust is uh, you know this idea of fake it to make it you know a uh, lot of people feel like you can suddenly just uh, uh, you know push yourself and and just fake it to make it and then it will be fine again i would urge that that actually erodes mental health and it's very important to be true to your feelings be real about them accept it go through the pain uh, and not necessarily fake it to make it because it's short lived and and uh, you know this is this is a marathon not a sprint nothing don't uh, that's, that's such an interesting uh, insight you know it's a marathon uh, it's not like a short race uh, there's one more question from dr bansiwal um he wants to ask is our mental health do a okay he's asking is does mental health have a daily cycle of peak susceptibility and resistance like he's trying to ask is it more uh, extreme during certain hours like evening hours or morning hours is it more extreme at certain point in the day so that is it is the question uh, is kepal and dr shikhar Well, uh, I would love for Shekhar to. Uh, my my answer here. is, if I understand correctly, yeah, uh, you know, we all have uh, a different uh, uh, day cycle, day and night cycle, and some people find it uh, much more, uh, much better to work in the morning, and and as the day passes, they become more and more stressed. So I would say that the morning time is one which is mentally, mentally, generally the easiest and the healthiest time. but for some other people it could be that the morning is more stressed and the evenings are better when they finish their work so i think you should look at uh, your own stress level your own anxiety level during the day and decide what is best for you and as i was saying earlier find some small activities that you can do when there is a peak on your stress and anxiety so keeping a, a watch on your stress level and doing something about it when it reaches too high is the is the best way to do it because we all vary in our own uh, cycle of that day uh, but again emphasizing that a good night's sleep is very important uh, just because there are too many things to do do not ignore the sleep that is necessary for you which is generally about 7 hours some people require 6 some people require 8 but whatever is is good for you you must have that otherwise you will be more stressed the next day 
Thank you, Dr. Shekhar. Uh, in the interest of time, I will uh, just take one last question. Uh, it comes from Ankita. Uh, she's asking, are there sections of people or certain traits in individuals who may have uh, or certain traits that make individuals more prone to mental distress or disorders? Are there certain traits or are, is there a section of people who would suffer from a mental illness compared to the other section? I'm happy to go first and then have Shekhar have the last word. Um, I, you know, I come more from a lived experience point of view, and and so um, uh, and so what I can share is really things that we've experienced uh, in in the family and in in other families that I've worked with also very closely. Is that for different people, it's it's different, but uh, certainly genetic factors play a role. Um, early childhood experiences, uh, trauma, sexual abuse. Uh, domestic violence, um, abusive um, uh, use of substance. Uh, these are all things uh, that, that play a role. Uh, there is an intergenerational impact. Um, uh, you know, if there's a dysfunctional marriage uh, and the children, also bullying, peer pressure uh, and other things. Uh, but a lot of research uh, to, to me has shown that what you experience in the first 10 years of your life is really the building block. And often, you know, they say that that, that most people's problems are either uh, coming from fear, shame, or the fear of shame. And uh, a lot of that is actually related to certain things that we may have experienced as traumas uh, or neglect or pain points uh, in our early childhood, which remain unresolved. And that uh, those negative emotions are in a way, you know, you might say in layperson's terms, sort of trapped in, in the body. And uh, we really have to work on ourselves uh, to release and let go and, and also recognize that we are now um, able to uh, bring about functionality in our own lives. So that the, the difference between functionality and dysfunctionality uh, is really something that, that we're trying to strive for. Shekhar, over to you. Well, you have, uh, you have said it very, very comprehensively that there could be a small genetic factor, there could be early childhood experiences, especially abuse and trauma, and which are all very important. But I would like to focus on, on what are the, the factors that you can actually avert. What can you do about it? And there, uh, social connectedness is extremely important. Be socially connected, at least with your family, with a few close friends. In fact, it's not important to have hundreds of friends. It's very important to have a few close people that you can really confide with. And that is the protection against common mental disorders, anxiety, depression, and, and other problems. And so uh, if you have uh, close friends, make the best use of them. If you don't, try to have them because that is your, is your insurance against having a mental illness in future. And of course, uh, do self-care, take pride in what you're doing, and, and don't feel guilty about pampering yourself from time to time. Back to you, Vaishali. Thank you, Dr. Shekhar. These are such interesting insights. Uh, Ms. Kirpal, before we close, uh, is there, you know, because we joined, you joined in late, we wanted to know if there's anything you'd like to add in, the, in your parting thoughts to this. Um, thank you. I think, I think conversations like these are very important um, because it makes everyone uh, recognize that uh, everyone's dealing with something or the other. Uh, at some point in time and so um, so we're all we may not all be in the same boat but we're in the same storm uh, and uh, there is comfort in that because it uh, it helps people uh, feel that what they're going through is normal and be more open about that um, i also feel that uh, helplessness it does not equal to hopelessness and and this is very important mental health and, and illness is something that makes us lose our uh, self-confidence, our sense of self, our sense of worth, uh, our place in the world in a way. Uh, and it's very important to recognize that this is a phase, it will pass. There are tools and services and professionals available and the support of friends and family uh, that can really help get through this phase. So think about, uh, think, don't think about it as a dead end uh, or, you know, and that's why a lot of people delay, they, they wait for anything and every reason. Uh, uh, before getting any kind of mental help because there's this constant thing of putting it off. And I would say bring it on, you know, invite invite that exploration because you, you don't know what you will find. It feels a lot more intimidating than it actually might be. Um, and you might find that you, you have a better version of yourself, uh, a more peaceful version of yourself, uh, a more aligned version of yourself, uh, and then you may never want to let go. Uh, so, you know, there is a lot of benefit in proactively trying to seek out 
uh, and get support and help and, and nurture your own mental health. Thank you, Ms. Kirpal. There's such positive thoughts to end on. You know, just bring it on. Let's let's do it together. Uh, Dr. Saxena, would you do you have any parting thoughts before we close this panel? Uh, just one thought, uh, as Neha was saying, uh, take care of your mental health. And if you need help, don't hesitate. Don't delay. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was lovely having you both join us. Uh, thank you, everybody who joined us today. <laughs> You can hear more about InnerR and Librem. You can log into their websites. InnerR is also a platform where you can discover a lot of things on self-care tips, which we discussed today. And you can go to Librem, which is, again, offering a lot of mental health solutions. Uh, these two uh, organizations are, are more than happy to help you. And more than anything, take care of yourself and let's talk mental health. Let's make it easy, as we discussed on this panel. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much, Dr. Shekhar and Dr. Amin, Ms. Neha Kripal. Uh, we are extremely honored to have you had come to this panel. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.